And hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, uh, welcome. It man. is Saturday night. That means it is time for the weekly dig. Looking forward to this all week, especially given the movie we're about to talk about, which I think we all have thoughts on. For anyone new to the stream, it's a live show. We dig into anime old and new. I'm Brent. These are my tremendous co-hosts, John. Say hi, John. Hi, John. And, and Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hello, Steve. Come with us. <laughs> and uh, you know, biblioteca. <laughs> and let's start our dig tonight by analyzing an uh, anime movie we all watched this week, Hayao Miyazaki's 1986. The Castle in the Sky, typically Laputa, The Castle in the Sky, but that got changed for international release because of what Laputa means in Spanish. So um, we are going to uh, just move right on past that. Yeah, uh huh. You oh, got it. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Oh, so that, <laughs> so, that so, really so changes I, the film. Yeah, it, it does. Sure does. Well, when I when I I've never I thought I watched this movie, but I never have. Huh. And uh, it, as it turns out, hmm. and so then of course when they bring that up and I'm like, like uh wait 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 I know what that means <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah um so, and for context this is um um this is like I believe Jonathan Swift um his his stories about yeah, this is um obviously there are a lot of stories like this like back in the the, the 19th century and such and there was a legend of a this this thing and the made-up word was La Puta there was nothing, mm -hmm. you know, about Spanish in that, but yeah. sensitive <laughs> families. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, the Brigadoon of the sky. If you there will. we go. There we go. <laughs> Every hundred years it rises from mist. Um, and let's talk about this opening, because I think it's definitely one of the most iconic openings in the Ghibli canon. Um, and I love how it opens and kind of what it communicates to the audience. Whoops, and I'm going to switch around the, uh, our view. I forgot about that. <clears> so everyone can see what we're doing. Um, there we go. So you're, you're behind a cloud right now as there far as I can see. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll fix that. Um, get everyone where they're, they're supposed to be. There we go. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just get clouds. Now, it should be pointed out, what was Miyazaki's movie before this? Nausicaa. How does that open? Clouds. Um, so definitely kind of... Um, uh, An amazingly there. rendered cloud. Oh, I mean, they're all yeah, very, yes. very well done. Gorgeous, gorgeous clouds. Time and effort were spent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely. Um, and then we immediately see this airship. Um, cool uh, airship. Very cool airship. Um, and we yeah, see this again with the, you know, such interesting ideas about the things that... <laughs> That Miyazaki does with stuff. Yeah. Like you could have just made a dirigible. You know, it's it, right. but you've got this <clears throat> weird rotor thing sideways, but it's just like, wow, what a fantastical vehicle that really just pulls you out. It's like, oh no, yep. this is not nineteenth century like mm. ideas come to life, steampunkish. This is mm. a different world. This mm -hmm. is a different thing going on. Right. Don't think it's like just ye oldy days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. ah, gotcha. I get where you're placing me in this now. <laughs> I also love that like, there is absolutely no reason why they should fly. Um, right. like, there is no flotation, you know, flight thing. They just do. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, which, again, kind of pulls you into, okay, we're, we're in a different environment here. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the ship that, um, that looks like a bird, I won't say mm -hmm. anything about who it is yet, mm -hmm. but at, at some point, one character steps on the, the rubberized mm. bladder that is the balloon. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious there's no helium. There's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a balloon. <laughs> looking like a balloon. <laughs> like, how lift works in this world, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, which is like Goliath. <laughs> yeah. How do you get that off the ground? Um, uh, the, 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 the power of friendship. There we go. Um, <laughs> the best kind of ship. Yes. Friendship. Um, <laughs> but what's, what's so cool about this opening is how little dialogue there is. Um, yep. It's just the ship. It's just these these characters. Now we see them looking at another ship, so we know kind of what they're doing. Um, we see that other ship. 
Uh, we see it flying along. Um, uh, those characters fl- get into these sort of dragonfly things and fly towards it. Uh, and then we see this uh, little girl in the window. Um, and just like her person, or her, her expression tells us kind of what we need to know. Yeah. Um, we even have this, uh, this uh, yeah, FBI men in black kind of guy um, show up with food and she doesn't even acknowledge it. It's like, okay, yeah. you need to know clear what's going I, on. I, I was going to say that was like great storytelling there. You have no dialogue, no nothing. And she's just kind of wistfully looking out the window and the guy's providing food and she's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> basically, it's, you know, want nothing from you all. Mm-hmm. So you Which immediately think, know is yeah. something's off. Yeah. yeah. Which again, you know, we said it before. It's like there's so much in the art mm-hmm. that in live action, you've got all these wonderful muscles in your face yeah. and all these different ways that you can move your body in, in an organic fashion that <laughs> conveys things without any words. Mm-hmm. Animating that is like yeah, yeah. a <laughs> real good trick. <laughs> right. Because you don't have anything to have body language. So you have to make it have body language. Mm-hmm. And it's like her entire expression, the tension that's in that room mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is palpable yeah because somebody had to sit there and engineer that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In that drawing. I'm yeah. Like, uh, absolutely yeah this, this is, is why they're good at what they do yeah it's why these movies make money um uh but yeah totally um uh yeah and so you just you know you get them sitting there um i also love the contrast of the fact that like we don't go inside the room we the camera stays outside the room kind of looking in on this kind of um, warm, you know, warm, warmly lit, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, fairly upper class kind of scenario, but kind of staying outside of it, kind of distant from yeah. it. Um, and she sees the, the dragonfly show up. And again, what's, what's great about this is, as audiences watching this for the first time, we have no idea who any of these characters are. We don't know who's yeah. the bad guy. Um, um, you know, Mama immediately pulls out a gun. And it's like, oh, oh, okay, this is... We built the ante here. <laughs> exactly. With their ornithopters. Yes. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought when I was like, I bet you Brent and Steve are going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 here we go. <laughs> Which I think they actually call them that later in the movie. Um, Did they? Oh. I, I, I think when, they're, like, when they're, they're getting on, they go, get off the ornithopter or, th- or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, they come in, and then, you know, to that point, communication... Um, we immediately um, get a sense of the kind of the type of action movie we have here. The fact that nobody's dying. Right. Yes. Um, it, it's very kind of cartoony, Lupin the Third esque, you know, um, kind of kind of Castle of Castle Castle Castle. Exactly. Yeah. Very, <laughs> yeah. very much that. Um, well, the way everybody's running and they're masked and they're, mm-hmm. they're the physicality of it, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> well, yeah. definitely. Well, look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, All the way down to the two crewmen who are working like a, a Maxim machine gun, and they're kind of yeah. dancing around. Nobody dies. Not only they're pirates, they're magic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I know. I was gonna say, like, like in that sequence, and they bring out this like mini Maxim gun. They're turning the crank, and the bullets yeah. are coming out, and they're like from fifteen feet away. Yeah, like, <laughs> that would have cut you in half. half <laughs> right? yeah. It's fine. And then, and then I was reminded, oh, this is Ghibli, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Um, this is a family movie. It happens off screen. It happens right. off screen. Yeah. This, this, this is aimed at, aimed at kids. Um, what you don't see is the first three guys who got off the ornithopters <laughs> who got hit by that. The yeah. You only see success with the guys who made it. To the there machine. we go. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, very kind. Um, very kind. Yeah, no, it, it's absolutely true. It's, it's, it's fascinating seeing how, the, how careful the movie is with violence and death and so forth. Yeah. Because there's definitely death later on in the movie. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yes, there is. Oh, um, but it's 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 carefully handled. Um, uh, yeah, and then um, uh, you know the 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 villain. Let's be honest. Um, uh, you know, sets things up. Uh, by the way, uh, if, you, if you're watching the uh, English version, voiced by the inimitable <laughs> yes. Mark Hamill, which um, thoroughly confused me. Yeah, oh, so like, that, that's Mark Hamill. No, no. Yep. so when he oh. pops up and he starts talking for the first time, I'm like, one. <laughs> Luke? Luke? Yeah. Is that you? There's a little Joker in there sometimes, too. Yeah. I yeah. was going to say, I was waiting if he, had, he popped out. I, I watched it in Japanese. Was it? 
Uh, it's that's exactly right. Damn, if you yeah. guys had told me, I would have watched it. <laughs> Watch it again in English. Uh, uh, yeah, that's where that's going to have to go. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, and, and, and again, you, 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 you learn so much about character. Where like He's not panicking. You know, he's not going crazy. In fact, he immediately goes to send a message, and he's very focused on that, very calm and in control. Um, and we learn about Sheeta. Um, <laughs> that she is not simply the retiring, you know, princess to be rescued. Um, yeah. Because she hits on the back of the head with her, with her, with her glass bottle. Which, you, uh, you know, if you ever had a wine bottle empty, it's... Mm. She, you know, wow, that was a, she could have cracked his skull over yeah, the coconut. Absolutely. Like that's, that's telling you something about, like, it's not just, um, mm. she's just doing something to put a little, you know, a little yeah. forward motion. It's like, no, she's making some decisions that have some, could yeah. potentially have some very deadly consequences. And absolutely. it's like, okay, I get the weight of where you're going with this now. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like she is in – we don't know, but mm-hmm. we know she's in, in extremis with yep. whatever these people are doing. Mm-hmm. And it's a deadly experience because yeah. she's willing to take that into hand to get out of it. I'm exactly. like, damn, okay, now I know exactly where, we're, where these guys are – these are the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> They're not there to protect her. Nope. Like, this is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, plus the fact, you know, to your point, um, that she then immediately proceeds to – Climb out the side of the airship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would been, that would for me would have been all sorts of, of you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Three miles up. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll just I'll just skirt the side <laughs> of this. Not a lot of places to go on this ship. Um, but again, you know, communicating the 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 extreme nature of the situation. Um, uh, and then the pirates break in, and we get our you know our our, our first you know, our, our initial lines of of sort of plot dialogue where uh, Mama is, is saying, um, uh, you know, I want to get that crystal. Um, and you're like, ah, okay. That, now we know kind of where the focus is on that. It should also be pointed out that um, all she talks about is the crystal. Like, she never talks about the girl. That's the only thing she's focused on. Um, even when she t- falls, um, you know, Mama just goes, oh, I lost my crystal. Damn. <laughs> Barely cold. Singularly focused. Singularly focused, indeed. Um, well, I mean, you can only sell a kid for so much. That crystal's worth a lot. <laughs> no. I mean, uh, if you get both, that's teacher. double profit. Yeah, yeah really... exactly. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Miyazaki throws a child off the... <laughs> into a void at the beginning of his yeah. movie. And I was like, all right, you have my attention. Um, You've made your point, sir. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> Um, and we transition into the uh, the open credit sequence um, with this um, um, lovely, again, very um, um, I'm trying to think of the, the term, but the uh, like the woodblock print um, yeah. and, you know, illustrations <clears throat> of the book um, of all this stuff. But it also kind of tells the story of this civilization, this idea of all these windmills creating power, and then the uh, the wonderful image of this digging machine going down. Um, and scooping out right. all the soil and getting that idea of okay, where you know these aren't people with pickaxes. This is machinery yeah. doing all this work, um, and all of this uh, very you know industrial era uh, technology with the black smoke and so forth. And then we transition to you know again very Jules Verne esque yeah. uh, illustrations um, of all these these flying ships um, uh, ending up with Laputa. Um, and not just Laputa, like lots of these things. And you, know, you think of like the what, the what the movie poster would look like, which I'm sure it was, you know, Laputa in the sky and all that kind of stuff. And coming to the movie, and you're like, oh, it's not just the one. Like this was this was a thing. Um, and something that I noticed this time around, which I didn't the first time, um, is we'll see if we can get it here. Um, there is an image in here. It ends with Shita. Like one of the last images of in this is Shita on a plane with a cow with a turbine in there. And that is, I think, Miyazaki hinting that, you know, this girl is connected to all of this. You know, she is, okay. th- that, that is the end line of all of these things, is this girl. Um, yes, because you see, she talks about her yak. Mm-hmm. And Pazu says, I'd like to take, I'd like to go back and see your country and see your yeah. yaks. Mm-hmm. So it's like, 
you know, there yeah, she yeah. is with her yak. Um, she really looks like a giant schnauzer, but that's yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different world. Yaks are apparently are a little different. Um, I also like the fact that um, that looks like an actual turbine from one of the ships. The implication being that you know when they migrated here, they must have like come on a ship and like dismantled it to do whatever they're doing here. So they've got like little bits of Laputan technology perhaps scattered around their right. their homes. Who who knows? Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, Shita falls through the sky, um, and the amulet um, the lights, and down she comes. Um, and then we come to uh, Cork. Basically, um, yeah. <laughs> Aaron and Cork. all your wonderful tin mines. Yeah, um, and <clears throat> and again, your visual storytelling. No one's wealthy. Yeah, people have patches on their clothes. It's very you know working class, and it should be pointed out again. This is one of those probably Miyazaki kind of very subtle storytelling. You know, if you if you went to one of these towns in the time, you would certainly see that. But you you, know, you would also see middle class. You would see a broad spectrum of society in any one of these towns. Uh, the fact that everybody is a minor is like mm, this is not good. Um, bad things are happening. Um, but I, I do like the way that that as Pazu is running in to get meatballs mm-hmm. and get his get lunch right, for his boss. Yeah. Um, that you get a very a very clear laboring. Mm. class of people mm-hmm. who are not downtrodden yeah true. right you know it's very lively it's very bright mm-hmm. you know you get the you get the visual that it's there's a socioeconomic divide yeah. but you don't get a sense that it's like oh our lives are toil and misery right. and everything's right. awful and unique it's yeah. like no that they're finding joy in little moments of life mm-hmm. yeah well and you know uh Miyazaki, you know, organized the union at Toy. Um, I was, I was, I was going to say, it, <laughs> it, 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 it was not quite the workers' paradise, but it seemed like they were well on their way. Yes, there's definitely a, <laughs> some, some Marxism, I think, you know, worked yeah. into this whole thing. In fact, we'll see a poster later on. The nobility of labor. Right, right. totally. Um, there's definitely at work here a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, like you said, you know, Pazu gets his, um, uh, his, his pail. And, goes and the Ghibli mustaches and beards. Yeah, very much so, yes. <laughs> Abound. <laughs> yeah, this, this is probably like exhibit A for the Ghibli mustaches. Yeah. Um, and so he sees Shida. And again, no dialogue. He just comes up and and, and protects her. Um, and then that, that wonderful moment where uh, her gravity comes back. Um, <laughs> right. He's like, a, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that because the animation is... is Clearly, where that board's bending, and yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Snap, and then them to tumble like it actually wasn't like a thousand foot fall; it's only like four feet. Yeah, and it's like it was going to be a perspective thing, and I'm like, mm. nope. Pazu pulls it out, even yeah. with that board straining against two people's weight. And, and again, there's a story thing, which we'll, we'll see more of here. Um, there's a lot in these opening sequences telling us a lot about Pazu, um, and that he, you know, he he is he has super strength. Let's just be honest, um, and he, he's basically Conan. From Future Boy Conan. I mean, it's just right. who he is. And, yeah. and He's just unreasonably durable. Yes, very much so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then we get, again, to your point, more you know, kind of nobility of the worker and the, you know, taking care of all this stuff. Um, getting across the fact that the machinery is not working well and they don't seem to really have a handle on the machinery. Um, like, they're keeping yeah. it going. But there's not like, oh, well, we'll just fix this. It's just, it's just, yeah, whatever can we do? Yeah, like one of the steam pipes has like a rag tied yeah. around, <laughs> around it. Like, I'm not sure that's how you seal a steam pipe with cloth. <laughs> do we not have duct tape, I guess? Yeah. Exactly. Do we not have rubberized cloth? I mean, it's mm-hmm. steam. It's, you know, like, do we not... a bandage on it, it's just leak steam. I mean, what are we doing? Do we not know how to weld? Like, that, yeah. <laughs> like that would be the, kind of the solution. Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, given the tools that they're that they seem mm-hmm. to be working with, it is all just physical tools. Yeah. There's not anything that seems to be any kind of fire tool yeah. like welding or any of that other stuff that we can see. And and again, it's where you know the audience looking back and goes, "But wait, we saw all these airships, all this kind of stuff. You know, why aren't yeah. they using all those? Oh, they yeah, they don't have those anymore. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. And up come the, the, there's you know, obviously the, the miners aren't mining anything, they're not finding anything. Um, and so we cut back to the pirates, 
um, uh, which kind of doesn't do anything. Um, and then we cut back to. <laughs> um, I may return return to this theme later. Um, I do really like uh, in this shot where Pazu is kind of tidying up and finishing up. Um, you see this projector on him, and he's constantly glancing back up at Shita as he's as he's uh, walking around. Yeah, um, this idea that it's still in his head. Um, well, I like the the chivalry of. I'm gonna take off my my thin you know, <laughs> vest <laughs> and put it over top of you. It's like if this was cold, she'd still freeze. <laughs> yeah. You know, plus one I for the for the top try and doing that. Exactly. It's good. Man. The top that counts. Um, and then somehow he carries her home. I'm not quite sure how. Um, again, he's coming. Super strange. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, and so uh, wakes up, and we get the the morning of the slag heat. <clears throat> Um, yeah. uh, uh, sequence where Pazu wakes up and plays this beautiful um, horn piece. Now, um, for some reason, and I, I, I say for some reason because I, I, I'm sure there's a reason, but I haven't found out yet. Um, <clears throat> when they re-released this um, a while back, Joe Hisishi went back in and he reorchestrated the soundtrack. Like he wrote new pieces, he changed pieces of the soundtrack. Um, oh. And this is one case hmm. where that happened. I think it's kind of interesting because in the original version, it is just a horn. Um, and it's just the horn playing it all the way through. Now it's a horn, and then you hear a guitar playing that comes in to accompany it throughout <clears throat> the piece. Hmm. Um, and the original version is kind of starkly beautiful, if you will. Um, right. Whereas the new one just kind of has more nuance to it. Um, so if you're ever watching the movie and you're like, wait, this isn't, isn't what I remember. You know, are we in a Berenstain Bear situation here? No, it's just they, you know, um, there's literally two versions of the soundtrack. I just love the unspokenness to it. Yeah. Is it Pazu's job to wake the town up? Right, right. yeah, yeah. And yeah. why right. is it not like, you know, just like one short, yeah. sharp tone or something, mm-hmm. or like a bugle call, like a military bugle call? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Really cool, though. You know, right. what, what is the significance of releasing trained doves? Yeah. Doves of peace, mm-hmm. presumably. Yeah, sure. Um, right. He's playing, he's not playing a military bugle. He's mm-hmm. playing a you know, trumpet. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it takes it, you know, more in the civilian. But what do these things mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, Pazu, you are the town pigeon keeper <laughs> and the town horn waker upper. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's very odd. and the fact that you know he didn't wake up to an alarm, right? So yes. It's not like he's he has to wake them up at six a.m. every morning or something. He just does this thing. Um, it's very interesting. It could be noon. I, I was kind of, I was kind yeah. of halfway. <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of half waiting for like you know as they're going mm-hmm. as he's playing the song. It's just, and it's a beautiful little scene. Yeah, where it just kind of tracks through the through the little mm-hmm. town, mm-hmm. and you can get a sense of world building. But I kind of half expected, like, somebody somewhere, like, some arbitrary person just yelling, God, oh, dude, stop it. <laughs> Shut up. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful scene, but again, I don't know quite why it's there. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, Peter wakes up. Mm-hmm. But but I was gonna say, it, mm. it seems like it there is a function to it because Absolutely, yeah. he does, because he has cheated there mm-hmm. like you know so this is a person that he's literally dropped from heaven and he's taking yeah. care of this person and you know he's just like oh but i'm going to do these things first right and it's just kind of like okay so this has got to mean something please somebody tell me <laughs> but you never get it you nope. never get it no nope. maybe because she's an angel who fell from heaven there he is go. the trumpeting herald announcing her arrival uh, i like it um totally you know what that's actually probably not stupid no, I, I that's actually that. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think and that the actually pigeons works. the birds of peace. Mm-hmm. Oh, good lord! <laughs> you could also well, and they, they're not quite as obvious as in Metropolis. Jesus, but, you know, the, the, the pigeon Christ. wings. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. That, um, that I stunned myself. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> um, he even says, "You know, I thought you maybe maybe may an angel or something." Yeah. Um, oh, right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, someone should make a, a you know a, a, a video of that. You know, like you're an angel. You know. Um. Anyway, uh, not that movie. Um, no. Uh, 
instead we're done with those movies (laughs) (laughs) Um, at least until 4.0 right Um, until the reboot reboot or the rebuild um, and then um, what's so interesting about the scene though is that like she's interacting with him and like he asks to see your ambulance and she has no problem taking it off and giving it to him yeah and I love that. She's like, oh, I trust you. Like, you, you're fine, obviously. You know, I, there's nothing um, uh, to worry about with you. Um, and I love how they kind of get across the fact that, um, A, Pazu is very trustworthy, but also maybe Sheeta isn't, like, the most worldly wise person in the world. Um, and is kind of uh, trusting. Um, uh, where are yeah. inter- mm, Go ahead. You, no, no, I was just going to say, it's kind of interesting that he actually kind of figured out yeah what it was for mm-hmm. even though it didn't work for him yeah yeah and that's how yeah. we set up how this the, the dynamics of it but it's kind of interesting that he figures out oh okay if i have this then yeah. i should theoretically be able to fly and i'm just gonna step off this yeah. ledge here <laughs> <laughs> i'll just jump off a cliff just to test this theory which i think also kind of foreshadows the ending again where you know she is kind of overwhelmed by everything in the climax it's really positive that figures out here's what we need to do yeah. Um, but yeah, exactly. You know, Pazu just sort of walks off a cliff, and uh, yeah, it doesn't really work too well. Um, but again, kind of uh, you know, acknowledging that he can fall through a brick wall. I was going to say the masonry is not that that, <laughs> that stable there in this world. But it's still like a couple layers. Yeah. Of masonry. And this kid just just bolted right through without fracturing his leg yeah. or like cracking his skull open. <laughs> So yeah, apparently they lost the art of masonry. Well, right. yeah, apparently um, that, or they've they've heightened the art of bone building. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, people's bone density is like ridiculously. It's close to adamantium. Probably. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> um, and again, you know, visual storytelling, getting across it. Oh yeah, Pazzo will be fine. <laughs> Whatever yeah. happens, he's not even scratched. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Like we we see him scratched and dirty later on, but it's like no, it just falls through the vault and yeah. brick ceiling. It's like, hey, what's up? Right. Yeah. He's um, just grows grow it like the tick nigh and destructive. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and so in the come, we get our first um, uh, sign of of Lapita. Um, and our first information about that. Um, and kind of the backstory here, and here's where I was like, oh, oh, right, Michelangelo connection. <laughs> um, this scene of them of pilots flying through lightning, right. Arcadia of my youth, youth. Yeah, because yeah, it's 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 that whole plane scene where he challenges the mountain. Right, it's that huge huge storm. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Which, which would have come out well before this movie. He's like, ah, I see what you're doing there, Miyazaki. Um, the universe. Absolutely. You know, they're all, the, the, those universes are all connected, definitely. <laughs> um, and then uh, his father is really good with the camera. Um, and <laughs> in, in, a, in a pinch, his dad could take some great stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Um, I don't need a gimbal to take this picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. I don't um, need 15 minutes to expose the, yeah, exactly. the slide. Where's my flash pad? Damn it, I can't get this. Mm-hmm. Um, well, his father was named Gertrude Polaroid. So, I, you know, see. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah, um, and then got to keep the story moving. So in come the pirates. Yeah, and we ignore the, the Michelangelo plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we talk uh-huh. a little bit about it, and then that's it. It makes mm-hmm. an appearance. There's the picture. Right. And yeah. off we go. I'm like, yep. I wanted to see more of the plane. Yeah. I thought it was going to have a thing. I, th- I, yeah. I saw that. It was there. The exoskeleton is there. And like, like you said, it's, yeah. oh, yep, it's Michelangelo's plane and, and, you know, whatever. And I really thought it was just like, oh, this is how we're going to get yeah. from uh, yeah. here mm-hmm. to here by using this thing that he knows about. Yep. No, no. no. Yeah, like a Nadia th- kind of thing. I was going like, to say, oh, that's, well, you know, that's Pazu's where... Pazu's going to use his genius. He's already built this so far, and now he's going to use some, maybe the crystal, like, helps to get mm-hmm. lift for the plane, and they get... To, I'm like, nope, it's nope. gone. Get nothing. It's done. <laughs> well, done. That's what Nadia was. Right, remember that was that was Miyazaki concept. So I'm sure he was like, let's let's do that. Let's move. Let's let's go in that direction with this storyline. 
Yeah. Um, and then, you know, everybody who animated that drew, you know, mm-hmm. got everything laid out and done. They were like, okay, now the Stewart's not going to focus on that at all. Well, and oh, you. <laughs> it should be pointed out, you know, that is Miyazaki's way of doing things. He just kind of pushes forward and then figures out how to tie everything together as he goes. <laughs> so it's like, you know, one of those things was like, oh, I can't wait for, you know, act three on this. And he's like, yeah, maybe. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> Perhaps. Just go back and treat your carpal tunnel until I come yeah, up with exactly. some other idea right. that yeah. I'm not going to use. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and so you know, Dole and the pirates show back up. Um, they figure out what to do. They run off by um, um, hiding uh, Sheeta. Um, and then we get this scene. And then we get the full metal alchemist scene <laughs> out here. Well, I just, I love the fact that they show up in like tux and tails and top hats. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like like, like they bring the it in the car. <laughs> so, so when they come up in the motor car, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm launching this, and I'm like, like, oh, we have another group of people coming in. So we got, uh, the pirates, so we got these yeah. guys, and that, no, those are the oh god. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, like you can be got beards got in your Sunday hat. best for this. Like, yeah. awesome. <laughs> good disguises, apparently, as pirates. Yeah. Yeah, good disguises. <laughs> It's a great way to not stand out wearing a white exactly, yeah. with a top hat in an industrial community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that doesn't, that, nobody's going to notice that at all. Totally. Or the car. Yeah. Like, nobody else has a car. A car. <laughs> like... um, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and so, you know, obviously, Paz and Shido run, run to the, uh, the town um, where the adults proceed to uh, help them. And, yeah, here's where, you know, Pazu gets hauled into a uh, um, uh, uh, somebody's house and like you see literally the workers rise up poster in the background of yep. things. Like, right. Ah, gosh, yeah. Miyazaki. See where it comes <laughs> um, um But yeah. Well, I like the fact for, for Pazu being an orphan. And, you know, he, he, <clears throat> that's brought up later. I hate we're both orphans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pazu obviously is, he is definitely a member of the community, which again, mm-hmm. you know, the trumpet beyond yeah. the herald for the fallen angel, mm-hmm. the yeah. angel falling from, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that obviously, Pazu is a member of the community. Yeah. It's like, and they they trust him and they protect him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yep. okay, I got, yep. I, got, I got that message right there. Like, mm-hmm. He would not have been pulled in if he was just some little street urchin that they took right. pity on. Exactly. No, they genuinely want to protect him. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh. Yep. Yeah. It's a very and, then you, and then you have the, the, the full yeah. metal alchemist Slash, um, workers of the U- world unite and uprise <laughs> moment against you know the the pirates who mm-hmm. are being dandied up and whatever. Yeah. Well, and they're they, corporate they, they, capitalist they, raiders. They, they, there we go. Right. Yes. Clearly. Corporate raiders. Yeah. The corporate raiders show up, and they had that big chest expansion scene. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's just glorious because they're both just like, ha, 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 ha. And the, and the wife goes, yeah, yeah, I'm not meant that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. They stand there with their frying pan, noticeably yeah, exactly. above the guy's thrumming. <laughs> yeah, screen. exactly. It's like, oh, you're above this, aren't you, lady? Yeah, yeah. noticeably <laughs> unimpressed. But, yeah. But, but did you notice that all the other guys, once they start jumping in, they're like mm-hmm. doing it with the father. They're like, ha ha. Pop. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's one of the one of the fun things about the the, the 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 fight is that it's not really a fight; it's just a street brawl. Um, yeah. Right. You know, and, and they're very much playing off the fact that this is not meant to like really hurt anyone. This is this is meant to be just kind of a you know a fight scene to kind of extend and be, be something fun for folks to watch for five minutes. Well, initially when they're fighting, it's like more like a manliness contest. Where yeah. It's like ha ha ha, wham in the gut. Oh, oh, oh really? Right. Ha, mm-hmm. And it's just like. Okay, so it's it's manly men being manly men in a group. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. good for y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I expect the lumberjack song to come on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's okay. Lumberjack, yes. Well, I was waiting for the the mother to mm-hmm. like go in and just start hearing the pong. And she, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, and then just tell everybody to settle down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh. um, yeah, everyone sit on your hands. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The point thing I meant to point out mm. about the car that mm. comes in and the pirates come in. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know what vibe I was getting. Wind in the willows. Oh yeah, sure. But, like Mister yeah. Toad's wild. No, no, totally yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 a yeah. lot yeah. like that car. From, yeah, from the, yeah. Just the take the, the the back yeah. of that. Yeah, take the back of that off, and you would totally absolutely. Yeah, 
that's like that's what I kind of ran through my mind. I'm like, it would Miyazaki really have like had, had like a Disney kind of oh, sure. Joe's Wild Ride thing in there? Sure. Like, I think that's because that, it's a very distinct design for that mm-hmm. car. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, um, yeah, and so you know, I was surprised when Cheeto run off, um, uh, and we get our our big long uh, ridiculous chase scene. Um, uh, one of a few in this movie. Um, but probably this is this is probably the big one. Um, uh, and and again, visual storytelling. Um, and upping the ante <laughs> when Mama pulls out a German. Grenade. A grenade. <laughs> yeah. Potato masher and just doop. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's no longer like laughing knockout gas and mm-hmm. tear gas as they yell at one point in time. It's yeah. no, it's a it's a grenade. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this lady ain't messing around. Exactly, yeah. Um you're gonna get through oh, the ante on, on what's going on. Um uh yeah, and you get this 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 scene and, and getting to that point of carpal tunnel syndrome. Imagine animating all of this timber crumbling and all of the movement of all yep. of these pieces. And just, oh, gods. I loved it. And yeah. it was just, but I had to laugh at when they finally put the car onto the rails. Yeah. And that's what destroys the bridge. Yeah. Not, 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 <laughs> yeah. the, not the 15 ton, um, you know, locomotive with the, you know, three cars behind it, you know, <laughs> trailer cars. It's just one little, you know, Ford, whatever, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, on there going at breakneck speed and it was just like a fluid mo- motion of the rails just like oh. you know, zh- zh- ribboning out behind it yeah. and stuff like that and as they're going through the town being chased and mm-hmm. doing this this long chasing i don't know about you guys but i got sakadon in my head like when mm-hmm. they were going through it it's just like this just a lot of kinetic motion mm-hmm. and just like things moving 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 okay. and and it's just kind of like you're down like, because you know, they're in this valley kind of mm-hmm. thing, yeah. and that, that seems to have no bottom, mm-hmm. and um, it just keeps going and going. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, going, wow, that's that's um, for people who can't keep a mind together, that's kind of impressive mm-hmm. that they can mm-hmm. have well, <clears throat> these big you know, trestles, and, and, and yeah, and yeah, that's 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 very much something that I think Miyazaki was trying to hint at the fact that this this mind has been around for centuries. And it's yeah. been built and built and built and built. What we're seeing now is this tiny uh, bit of it. And the fact that they like really retracted back to a little tiny percentage of this, this thing that's basically now unused. Yeah. Um, you see, yeah, exactly. You see, you see all of these buildings like on the side of the mountains and no one's living there. Everyone's living yeah. up on the, on, the, on, the, you know, on the cliff. So yeah, totally. This uh, this industrialism reminded the the sort of ruddy rust mm. kind of colors mm. reminded me of Iron Town. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it's like which would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and it's your property. You can do with yeah, it what yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hmm. um, and then um, and again, I, I I do love just the fact that uh, I'm of the pirates like come to a screeching halt and look up. And they see the the plane flying over, yeah. And not towards the visual, but kind of the directing story, story of that of just bringing everything to a screeching halt to show you this one thing. Very much tells the audience that this is an important thing to pay attention to. Um, and boy, it does that. You're like, okay, that's that's bad. Like, if this woman who throws grenades is scared of that, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're going to redirect your attention from her braids to the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had hoped at this moment that it was going to be like a dramatic rescue. Oh, yeah. Like it's going to be some <laughs> character that we don't know about or yeah. something that it's like Basically mysterious. Shot. Yeah, some mm-hmm. mysterious inventor maybe. Yeah, there had, we go. Like seen Pazu's plane design mm-hmm. and sweeps down and says, I built the thing. Uh, yeah, you can have it. Fly away. <laughs> the, no, that didn't have it. No. So I'm like, oh, no. Um, this is a movie with a lot of villains. Yeah, just yeah. showing up. Um, uh, yeah, and so you know, obviously the military comes up. Shito runs off, um, and so uh, yeah, to, to your point, the 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 bridge starts to collapse, um, and so we get again another iconic scene of uh, Shito and Pazu um, falling down. And I, I do wonder how much Miyazaki's kind of playing to his audience here, um, of especially like a child audience of going. 
you know what you saw at the beginning of the movie, right? Like, you know this is going to be okay. Like, I can, I can put these kids in this danger, and you know they're going to be fine when they fall. Um, there's definitely a, a pretty scary moment. Yeah, I was just thinking about the anti Miyazaki, where it's just like, mm. they're not going to be okay. Yeah. They're going to hit the ground with a dull thud mm. and not move ever again. Jeez, oh, Steve, way to go, way to <laughs> Thank go you. on this one. Thanks, man. <laughs> wow. Um, See, now, I, I, could, I could have seen an interesting dramatic moment where you, instead of just knowing that they're going to be okay, mm -hmm. she drops the crystal. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they fall, and mm -hmm. then you do the, the, you know, which is kind of tropey in and of itself. They're falling, they're falling, they reach down, they uh, grab the crystal exactly. at the last minute and survive. Right. It's like, okay, yeah, that's been done. But it's like, yeah. that would have, you could have heightened some of that Definitely. drama you could have. that way, but yeah. Um, I, didn't write, I didn't write this. I didn't do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wrote I totally this. Uh, you're right, Jasper. That would be very gynaxic. Um, you have them just fall to their deaths. Um, uh, <laughs> and scene. Film exactly, that. yes. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, that was quick. Wait um, eight years for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, we clone them. We clone Pazu. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Many, many sheetas. Um... <laughs> Actually, that's basically fractal. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they come down, um, and then um, Pazu lights his lantern. And um, funnily enough, just this week, I learned what that lantern is. It's just completely differently. That's an alcohol lantern. Um, you put a little, or not called stove. You put um, a small amount of alcohol in the bottom, and if you light it, the the vapors uh, light. Right. And it, it, it works as a lantern. And alcohol is hmm. shelf stable, so you can carry it on your person, and it's not going to combust. Um, uh, 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 so yeah, so that's what that is, and that's what he's kind of hinting at that this is a normal. This would be a normal uh, type of like minor gear that you would just have, uh, right. you know, clipped to you because it's, it's something you, you know, you, you could safely carry it with you. Um, Better than a kerosene lamp. Exactly. Yes, because kerosene. It's certainly more portable than a kerosene yeah. lamp. Well, like, you know. You, yeah. you, you, you spill alcohol on yourself, that's one thing. Kerosene? Yeah. yeah. That's the idea there. Um, the alcohol evaporates, the kerosene yeah. just gets everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, in they go, um, um, and uh, we get a bit of uh, Sheeta's backstory. Um, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a, a lonely girl uh, in the Alps. Wait, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, I'm, there's nothing about Heidi. Um, and I'm just uh, a lonely space princess. Exactly, pretty much. Um, um, and uh, so, yeah, so we 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 learn it all. Okay, this is a typical uh, backstory. Um, and correct, uh, Kevin. The, the alcohol only burns for like 15 minutes or so, um, but it's a good like emergency thing. Um, and generally, you're with other people where you can just, uh, top top it up if you go to places. But it's, it's emergency. Um, and then we get this guy, Uncle Palm. Uncle Palm. <laughs> Um, it was a crazy cave dweller. <laughs> it was so <sighs> comforting when I watched uh, the Ota King's video on this. Um, the Ota King, Toshio Kata, does videos and he translated a bunch of them into English. And he did a thing on Castle in the Sky and he, and he got to Uncle Pop and he goes, Yeah, I think this was a swing and a miss on Miyazaki's part. I'm like, Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, Uncle Palm comes up, and he's clearly meant to like do more of this world building, and why is Uncle Palm here? There's clearly like, the people who live underground and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, like, what do we learn from Uncle Palm? Basically, that some of the rocks float or have some magic power, and that's kind of what Sheeta's necklace is. Um, but it's this really long scene. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sitting there in the dark, and it's a lovely scene. And then, you know, I, I love the moment of the you know, seeing all the lights um, in uh, and all this stuff. Um, but like, I fell asleep at this. I, yeah, I, I, I can hear you there. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of there's there's all of this kind of dialogue back and forth with Uncle Pop. You're like, I don't I, I don't understand why Miyazaki is spending so much time with this character, and then they just leave him and walk away. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Well, the minute he shows up and it's like, oh, it's Uncle Palm. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so you, 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 stay close to me, Sheeta. 
<laughs> because you, you don't want to get lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pause. Does that mean you know you know all this labyrinth, mm -hmm. and you've come down here in the direction you know Uncle Palm is, mm -hmm. or is Uncle Palm just literally plot device? It's like, hey, we're <laughs> lost in a cavern. <laughs> Oops, we stumbled on a plot device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, plot device. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to further our story with your plot devicesness, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so. I, I didn't fall asleep. I just kept waiting for plot device to do <laughs> something more. <laughs> like, and it never happened. Yeah. I'm like, gotcha. Yeah. One trick pony plot mm. device right there. We I, don't need much of that. <laughs> I'll be honest, you know, here's what I think he, he, he is there to, so that we have the scene in the darkness with the lights. I think that, that was an image in Miyazaki's head. He's like, how do I get there? I'll throw it a guy who shows it to them and we'll, we'll move on. And we're going to put it on to exposition that a bunch of 10-year-old kids are going to go, and, and somewhat <laughs> older adults are going to go, what? Huh? Okay. Are we past yeah. this now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, completely good job. So, going to the darkness is a you know, gorgeous moment. Gorgeous, gorgeous track. But. Well, it's an it's... interesting substitute for Pazu and Shida, mm -hmm. like, at some point, looking at the sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and being like, "Wow, look at the swirl of galaxies! Look at the stars! Isn't it beautiful?" Yeah. It's like, okay, is are you? Why are you substituting the actual sky mm -hmm. for yeah. this underground? Right. Now, this this literally grounds them versus Laputa, which is in the sky, mm -hmm. and what they are seeking is in the sky. So, are right. you trying to make some kind of like statement that it's like, you know, man's desires for sky are limited by Earth? And you know we always look to the sky, but we never see what's around us on the ground. Like, I, what am I making of this? And it's kind of the theme of the movie is that Lapia was kind of reaching too far, yeah. um, and that we, we are better off on the ground, um, as as she ta tells us later in the movie. Um, just like <laughs> outright. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it's a, I, I would call it a like an awkward scene. It's not a bad scene. It's just kind of weirdly placed, weirdly structured. Um, yeah. Well, it's a beautiful moment. Um, right. Whatever. Um, that put me to sleep. Yeah. Um, and yet, this is definitely a, not necessarily the most apocalyptic world, but definitely a, a world of lost technology. Definitely a... Uh, yeah. Um, uh, there's stuff out there that people don't know how to use. Um, yeah, I, I kind of wondered about a, a post-apocalyptic, because there is a moment there later in the, in the yeah. uh, show where they show Pazu's iron kiln, mm -hmm. whatever the heck he's living in. Yeah. And it kind of pulls back a little, and you see these like large pockmark craters. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's like, now those could also be test pits. Could, you know, this entire right. place is riddled. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm looking at it like thinking, oh, maybe the shelf holes. That was a I'm like no. That it's, it's you're living in an area that has mining. This is probably mm -hmm. a test pit. They didn't find anything. They moved to the next mm -hmm. test pit. Yeah, right. Like, so, but it's, it, it's, I think it's ambiguous enough that it's, right, like, yeah, totally. you know, mm -hmm. maybe yeah, something, maybe. yeah, it's hard mm -hmm. to tell. And if we're going to in more the future, there was absolutely an apocalypse in that. So yeah. they, they may be kind of, you know, they may be kind of hinting at that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, and to that point, that I think about it, um, you know, whenever we go outside of the town, we see just peaceful fields, you know, very yeah. England type right. fields, no sign of apocalypse. So, who knows? Um, uh, centuries beyond the third and back. There we go. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Fourteen years later. No. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So as they go, they see they see what they think is the, the cloud of Lapita. Um, um, uh, ship lands, and I do appreciate Miyazaki's kind of decision making here, where the the plane lands, and you're like, okay, you're good, they're gonna go, they're gonna escape. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good news. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you, know, you, you, you can't just run from the military forever. Like, they are going to catch up to you at some point. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, uh, well, the, like, it, you know, to be noted, they were a little quick on the ground trips. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. Know, the plane, if you had like four or five guys pop out with guns and be like, okay, that's believable. The plane mm -hmm. was circling, looking, sees yeah. people. But no, you have like the entire <laughs> army show up. Like, oh. You guys spread like two men every day, <laughs> like, the entire continent. They're over there. Uh, yeah, 
There are a couple of uh, moments in this movie where I'm like, that doesn't quite match up. With Actually, something that Oda King pointed out is that one of the one of the problems with folks who are fans of this is that they try to measure Laputa um, based on yeah. different shots yeah. in the movie. Because um, you know, you, like you can see Pazu here, and you can see you know this person here, and you, there. and you get completely different scales based on which shot you're using. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, was, was actually. Mm. Well, the yeah. eyelet's magic, damn it. Yeah, there we go. I, yes. I mean, I was seriously trying to figure that out at, yeah. at a certain point. I was just like, and I just gave, had to give up because it's just like, okay, here's a scale. Well, no, that doesn't work. Okay, mm-hmm. well, here's the, here he is running that. No, that doesn't work. It, this is supposed to be. It. Mm, just accept. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Suspension of disbelief. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is a, like, a storyboard which lays out. You know, it is X. You know, six thousand feet wide or something along those lines. But you know, it's clear they didn't really follow that when it came to the movie. One hundred and twenty <laughs> cubits. Yeah, we got, yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we, we go to our um, um, uh, to massive, massive fortress, absurdly massive. Uh, fortress Cagliostro. Sorry, no, just just regular fortress. Um, Cagliostro could wish all they had was yeah. G thirty fours and forty two. Yeah. <laughs> These guys got like twelve pounders on those things. Like, damn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Shvera Guslov, hell yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like a main online. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and, to, and uh, we get a bit, uh, more backstory about there being a military and Misko being a secret agent. Working for that very, very pedestrian. I don't mean that in a, in a bad way, but just kind of here's a, a linking scene of here's here's more information. Right. Um, but you do get a delicious little Mark Hamill. Like you yes. didn't know it was Mark Hamill at this oh. point. You would know at this point where he turns around and he goes, and that makes me your commanding officer. Exactly. <laughs> and just the voice, the voice. So you're just like Mark Hamill. There. Mm. Boom. Yeah. Dang it! Dang it! I missed so much at not hearing the English cast. Um, I'll also say, General is straight out of Gundam. Like, yeah. he, he's a zombie, just straight up, yeah. you know, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, and then um, uh, we get Cheetah in her room, uh, very nausea, actually, in terms of, like, you know, sitting on the bed, or sitting by the window. Um, uh, and, ah, oh, that's funny. Um, the red dress, the, ah, oh, that, that is kind of, so, I think... She, so Sheeta is basically Diana from Anne of Green Gables. Same personality, yeah. same character design, you just unspool the Princess Leia hair. Right? It's, it's, yeah. it's Diana. Um, very much a personality. And Diana Cavendish. Here we go. Uh, and um, uh, I just noticed Muska pulls out this red dress, but has the exact, is the exact same design as Diana's uh, yellow dress design in Anne. <laughs> And so I wonder if it's a little bit of a, oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, very, very funny. Anyway. Um, it's Sheeta of the Iron Fortress. Right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we are. Totally. Nice, lovely. Um, yeah, and so um, in we come to meet the robot, and I would love to have seen the reaction of the fans watching this movie in 1986, because they build up to it, and there's this big, what is this going to be, and... Um, as I mentioned some of my panels before, um, this is straight from an episode of Lupin the uh, Third that Miyazaki mm-hmm. directed. Like he, this is this is literally from that episode. So imagine the build up and the and the, the, uh, the fans going, "Oh, wait, yeah. wait, no, wait, 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 Lupin was the ah." Uh, <laughs> Then you have Lupin sitting across the room. Yeah, wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> have the, I, I mean, and you can't tell what's in the darkened room. It, that would be a really be cool awesome. and funny Easter egg to be like, have a picture of the back of Lupin. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and so you have, you know, obviously the, the, uh, the robot there, and they have um, no idea what it is. Um, uh, getting back to that lost technology theme. Uh, I love the fact that when she approaches. Uh, Muska says very confidently, it's quite dead. Really? <laughs> dead, and that's the word choice we're mm-hmm. using now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also appreciate just kind of the, the, the theming there, the fact that um, he basically is saying, don't worry, it's dead, and she's clearly scared of it because it is dead. Like, she, she finds it creepy because of what it is, um, and he just does not get that at all. Um but yeah, you get the, the the crest and the the, 
the connection to Laputa, and you realize Busca's not a very nice man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh. Um, He's a very dedicated civil servant. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, and so now you get the, the, the back and forth between, okay, basically, you know, if you agree to work with us, we'll let Pazu go. Um, and I suddenly actually started thinking about um, Pixar movies. Um, you know how every Pixar movie has, like, two-thirds of the way through, the two main characters argue with each other and go their separate right. ways. And okay. Miyazaki's doing that, in the, like, in the first third of the movie. <laughs> we have the, the right. separation between the two characters. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Um, um, oh, that's a good point, Joshua. It, it is very uh, foundation by Asimov, is that robots are, are, are gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really good, good point. Um, yeah, and so uh, 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 Pazu leaves. And I do think this, this is well played by Miyazaki, the, how much the two characters tell each other. The fact that Cheetah like doesn't tell Pazu everything that's going on for very good reasons, you know, yeah. she's not just withholding information, withholding information. Like she doesn't want him to get involved, so it totally makes sense that she would kind of you know hold back on these things. It's not the really annoying typical anime of you know. Um, um, I'll explain later <laughs> why you're chosen to save the world when the when, when the scriptwriter figures it out. Yeah, I'll explain later. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Insert exposition. Mm, yeah. Um, Let me introduce Uncle Palm over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, plot device. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, um, uh, Pazu comes home, um, and um, and again, I I think Miyazaki does a great job here of kind of slowing the movie down to kind of appreciate where Pazu is emotionally. Um, and really kind of getting you in there and how the, the coins come out. It feels like a very um, Judas Iscariot moment. Um, yeah. Of, of the coins in the ground. Uh, and he, he, he grabs those, goes to throw them away, but won't because it's money. Yep. Um, so yeah, I gotta, gotta keep it. Uh, and then just the whiz bang speed of the next few cuts. When he opens the door, bam! In he gets pulled. Yep. Um, great editing there. Uh, just like, wow! Um, uh, we are now transitioning to a new scene. Um, what do you guys think of the, 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 the interaction between Mama and Pazu here? Because it definitely comes off harsh, what Mama says to Pazu here. <clears throat> well, she is a pirate. Very true. <laughs> um... So, and given that they haven't had a tremendous amount of, like, sort of foundational interaction, mm-hmm. that he's been chased by them, mm-hmm. but he's not really had, like, time to talk face-to-face with her, mm-hmm. that she's sort of laying down where she's coming from, Yeah, that he will not mistakenly under, you know, mm-hmm. misinterpret <laughs> or misunderstand. Yeah. 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 So, she's, yeah, she's quite harsh, but... Yeah. Well, she's operating I, the way that i felt through this scene was that she's operating under a for herself maybe self-imposed uh timeline mm-hmm. that she has to get these things done because she's trying to access it i think what part of it is is at this point she realizes it's more than just the gem mm-hmm. that the girl you know yeah. the girl's involved True. yeah at this point with the gem and she's understanding that this is the thing mm-hmm. and she's trying and she's also pressing the button which yeah. is you like the girl, mm-hmm. you want to help the girl. Why should I let you help the girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just he, she's manipulating him, yeah. and, and yeah. she does it in a very gruff way. Absolutely right. And so to make him force force him to make the choice to to join <laughs> to join yeah. the pirates, yeah. and um, and she goes okay, wheels up in one minute, and he just goes through the whole thing and like that's good and all that stuff, and it's just kind of like you may never see this place again. Which to me, I was just like going. Well, Wow, she all but said, "Yeah, you you're probably gonna die." Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> yep. You, you know, we're gonna be three miles up. You might slip fall. And, you know, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you're flying in an airship without a seatbelt. You know. Yep. Just chances. Yeah, things, things happen. Things happen. Yeah. Th- right. Things happen. But she clearly thinks, by virtue of even being in his place, mm-hmm. she thinks that he is an avenue to get mm-hmm. to the girl, to get to the, yeah. to the to the treasure. Well, that's she's realizing that's not just the one aim, but yeah. Absolutely, you know, um, they're not just staying here. They're waiting for him to come back. Yeah, 
Right. Yeah, Pazu didn't have that food. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they've cooked, they've gotten things ready, and they're waiting patiently. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, that's very Joshua. I think you know, she comes into her own here as a character. Uh, up until now, she's been... Um, all we've seen of her is this sort of cartoonish, you know, um, yeah. uh, uh, antagonist. And now we see the wheels turning, really, in her head. Um, it really works. Yeah, um, because at this by this point in time, you know, the whole stopping on the train track, seeing the armored train, mm -hmm. that now it's no longer we just intercept the airship, get the girl, get the jewel. Now it's... <sighs> What avenues do we have to access the girl? Because yeah. we now have whoever, you know, the military guys were, uh, or the mm. government guys, whatever yeah. guy, and the army are involved. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a lot of different parties playing in this, and we need yeah. every single piece of this puzzle to come together. Mm -hmm. And Pazu might help us get her. Yeah. If the jewel's on her, mm -hmm. then that can get her slipping away from the two other parties that are the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, Mama's yeah. She, you know, you're right. The gears are turning. She's working a lot of different angles to try yeah. to get that jewel. Absolutely. Um, and and so I'm just gonna have to cut it in here and throw a side note to you guys because I don't know if you've ever seen this, but every time you guys say Mama, I think Mama from Judge Dredd, the movie Judge Dredd in the comics. I, so I have not seen that movie yet. Mama. So okay, yeah, sorry. sorry. It's, it's for, <laughs> the for the Stallone the, one. Okay. Judge Dredd. No, no, the one, the Carl Urban one. Yeah, and, I've and seen the Stallone one, ones. and I've read a few of the, uh, few of the, the yeah. draft novels, but yeah, yeah. or comics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just yeah, I, it, I have to every now and again reorient my myself, mm -hmm. and like like no, no, they're talking about anime, and they're not talking. Well, who's it to Dola? Dola. How about that? Dola. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as you, as you mentioned, in comes Goliath, the. You know, it's a ship from Nausicaa. It's a Torbeck ship from Nausicaa, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. I, I like the fact that it, it can't gently land, that it, like, it <laughs> hits the target. Like, bonk. <laughs> and, wow, again, mm. magic? How's that thing in the air? Right, <laughs> yeah, totally. It's so much heavy, heavy armament the on it. Tonnage. There's no way in hell. <laughs> the tonnage. Ah, no. It's it's like watching original Gundam and then out he pulls out like the metal axe. I'm just like, Tonnage, where does that come from? How do we do this? Where are the physics? Oh wait, yeah, okay, no physics, got it. And like invisible aluminum for uh, for it's it's aluminum. Aluminum. exactly. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, it's just, it all makes sense. Exactly. Plot device. Um, Plot device. No. <laughs> um, and it's one thing that I think Miyazaki is 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 good at is saying look this is fantasy right <laughs> like i can we can just do this we can just decide this is how this world works it's okay like we, i don't have to explain every single thing there's probably pages of note of sketches he has about how you know this one lodestone works to, to move everything on but it's fine yeah. we just move forward um and then um, the, the dragonflies. Either that, or we were supposed to have assumed how everything. Yeah, yes. Well, that's the other thing too. Yeah, very much so. Um, like so, we had a we were an intelligent here. audience. Yeah, but exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, now I feel bad. Um, um, Do your homework before you see movies, people. Come yes, on. pretty much. Um, well, we even get yeah, speaking of, of Nausicaa, uh, you know, uh, um, she you know, th thinks back to memory, and we get. Nazca walking through the field of gold as a child too. Like there's a, okay, we've seen that before. Um, uh, they would get the spell. Um, and he, and I also got a flavor flavor of Kiki on that when she's yeah. walking along. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Kiki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, little headband. She, she's guys. adorable as like a four year old from this. Yeah. Um, yeah, flavor of sheer awesomeness. The guy does. I, I agree. Um, yeah, so she remembers um, and. Uh, <laughs> And oh, good! That activates the robot. Fantastic, wonderful. <laughs> that, that's gonna go. That's well. gonna go well, exactly. <laughs> um, um, and I, I, and again, I think this was this was this is a a clever use of, of this particular um, thing because you, know, you have the robot. You're like, okay, fine, whatever. And then it reactivates, and as an audience member, you're like, I have no idea what that's gonna do now. And have, it's great know, how they how. 
Yeah, and it's great how nobody in the movie actually knows yeah. what's yeah. going on. <laughs> you know, and everyone's just like going, oh, it's a oh, 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 wait. It just took out the, oh, oh, no. You know, like lasers and all this stuff going, mm -hmm. I have no way to explain what's going on around me. Yeah. I'm freaking out. Yeah. Um, and Lupin's in the film. Yeah. Ah, yes. yes. Yeah, very much so. Like, like your screenshot that you have. Oh, yeah, that one's that one. Lupin standing there like, hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> there are culture. quite a few, like, Casagagri Ostro character designs in this. So, you know, whatever, whatever like, some character design they had for that, they were definitely pulling some stuff in for this. Um, I should also point out that um, uh, the uh, the robot does an angel attack. Like, there's literally the, yeah. You know, thing which you know, clearly that was pulled for 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 Eva. Um, I mean, you have God Warriors and Oz could do it, but it's more just you know, it's, it's the <laughs> as opposed yeah. to that yeah. really sound effect. I was like, oh, gotcha. Um, uh, and, and to your point, yeah, I, I love how uh, Muska uh, Muska comes out, and he has no idea what's coming, what, what, what's going on. He's he's freaking out, but he's also kind of turned on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. like, oh, that's, he's, he's already inspired. thinking of the applications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. already thinking exactly. of the applications. Yeah, definitely. I liked the choice they made that when the robot activates, I was waiting for its foot to like yeah. move back on its arm. To yeah, yeah good on. point. Good call. But instead, the raw sheer power of this thing, even broken, yeah. is like awe inspiring. Mm -hmm. yeah. That it's yep. missing part of an arm, it's missing part of a leg, and it is still blowing things <laughs> yeah. up like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. It's um, ridiculously powerful, even broken. Totally. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Um, and I also appreciate you to that point, like when it when it does its wings, you notice that it doesn't right. have the full wing, and yes. it launches, and it still launches, it just has to kind of course correct as it goes up. Yeah. Um, and so it's still, you know, you know, it's 95% effective. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, um, and then, and I also just love the imagery too, where that, you know, that first sight, that, that first inkling of what's going on with the robot when Muska grabs Sheeta and the robot immediately cuts off the bridge between them. Yeah. Yep. Like, oh, I, I, I think I understand what you're trying to do here. You know, not clear. It might just be a random attack, but th there's our first kind of hint that he's trying to protect Cheetah. Was it me, or did you hope that that he he lost his hand? Uh, yes, I was. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. I was thinking to be a little like, bit. This would be good here. comeuppance for the bad guy. Be like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's why they chose Mark Hamill for him. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> I was going to say too. I'm like that was perfect for Mark Hamill. There you go. One hand. There you go, Luke. Yeah, totally. Um, but uh, yeah, and so. Obviously, destruction ensues. Um, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yoshida doesn't even notice if the robot. They're, they're all just kind of guessing. Yeah. Um, uh, it shows where Laputa is. Um, uh, and then uh, it comes up. Um, we have more and more um, stuff going on. And where the heck is Pazu? And I say that because, <laughs> because like, 20 minutes ago, he was in sight of the castle. <laughs> it's like... Right. Miyazaki, you should, uh, it, it's been a while. Okay, whatever. Turbulence. Um, turbulence, there we go. <laughs> uh, we we, 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 saw we the pulled back. saw laser coming out yeah. of the castle, and he just went, head <laughs> back here a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Shouldn't bring an ornithopter into a laser fight. There we go. Totally. <laughs> ah, gotcha. <laughs> totally. um, and so, uh, yeah, things continue to not go well for the soldiers. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, you like, you know, there's a moment where it could have cut everybody in yeah. half at the top mm -hmm. of that tower. And instead, you just said that boing that hits the stone. They're like, that was oh no, and then run out yeah. of the yeah. like, <laughs> That was a really interesting thing because um, um, I think what they were trying to get, a, get across there with that is that like, it, comes in, it, it comes up and it's kind of like it's – I think the intent is that it is like doing test firings, like it's it's trying to use the laser, and then the laser goes full full bore. Uh, in other words, that's what the the soldiers think is happening. Um, but to your point, John, I think we as an audience member, audience members realize, oh no, they're warning shots. 
Yeah. Basically. Because yeah. it could have cut all y'all in half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Easily. Absolutely. Um, uh, a whole different movie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it <laughs> rains death and destruction. Kind of like an angel. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, Kevin Laser. I, I think it's also hinting at that kind of idea of an apocalypse. That it, they're the god warriors from Nausicaa, basically. Uh, they could very well have gone over the land and, and annihilated things. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Pazu, uh, company finally show up. Um, Shido wakes up to this, let's be honest, horrific vision. Um, yeah. and I, anyway, I appreciate Miyazaki kind of putting us in her eyes in that moment where she wakes up and she just sees burning destruction everywhere. Burning hellscape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and she's kind of, you know freaked out by that and horrified. It's like, oh, yeah, thank you. That would, that would be your most reaction. Um, um, and then, uh, yeah, and then basically the rescue, the, the, the big long rescue, um, which is beautifully animated. Um, oh, my gosh. Think of all of the coordination of animating these scenes, the special effects, the movement, the integration of all the characters who have to, you know, be in different you know angles from each other right. and, oh yeah. it's, it's nuts it's really a sequence um uh and then we get the kind of the apotheosis of this this scene and again i, I do appreciate it of now we finally realize we you know, we, we have confirmation that it's just trying to help um as it hands it off and then is is blown up uh by the military and it takes a shell to the chest like what twice yeah <laughs> Yeah, same time, and you see second time, not so successfully. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, and off it goes. Um, yeah, but then, and again, to your point, and foreshadowing, you know, when we see these things again, we know, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we know what these things can do. Um, um, yeah, absolutely. The storyboards on this must have been crazy. Um, so, yeah, so we finally rescued Cheetah. Um, uh, we fly off. Uh, we find out that she lost. Her, she left her pendant back. Um, as Musca now has the pendant, he knows where where um, where Laputa is. Um, and off we go. And we are halfway through the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. Um, okay. This is a joyful movie to watch, but boy, is there a lot of it. Yeah. Um, this time it started at 11 o'clock, not midnight. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think I started at like 9.30. Mm, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> yep, it just goes. Um, um, yeah, and here's where they, they fly past um, the side heap, and you, you see those. I, I agree, they, they, they look maybe like bob craters, maybe like they're just you know, digging pits. I mean, yeah, they're, it's they're intentionally it's hard to yeah. tell. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's funny because I couldn't figure out what they were either. But yeah. part of me was wondering if it was like you know, as we got get towards the end and we see the destructive power of the station, mm. um, <laughs> the arrow you know, of Ramanjana. Yeah, you know, we test it. Mm. Yeah, and to the the you know when when he shoots the the one laser, mm. Moscow shoots the oh, yeah. laser mm. off and it has this very big you know explosion. Yeah, you kind of wonder if that's what that was, right? A little bit when when you get to that point, but but you know you're seeing it for the first time. You see all these pockmarked things going on. You're just like, yeah, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. Um. So, uh, so yeah, so we, we go onto the ship, um, and we get introduced to the pirates, and Pazu and Shida get their time with the pirates. We get uh, um, the uh, uh, the the father figure here, who is definitely not. Totoro from Galaxy Express or, or Captain Harlock. Just definitely saying. not the uh, Boilermaker from Spirit Away. Definitely Boy. not the Boilermaker. Yeah, he, he definitely did not <laughs> reuse that character from Spirit Away. No, 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 no. no. Nope, nope, not at all. Yeah. Nope, no, not at all. No yeah. connection. No, no, no. Um, that was his cousin. There we are. They just <laughs> look very similar. Exactly. Um, it's identical twin. And here's the thing. Again. Tentacle twins. Oh, sorry. This is a really fun sequence. Um, full of details, very charming. Doesn't add a dang thing to the movie. <laughs> so, 
I'm not gonna lie, I got a little creeped out when one of the pirates comes in. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Sweet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it just comes in and she's making, you know, well, I'm not done with it. Uh, can I help? I'm like, going, oh, this is like really bad porn. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, please don't go there. Please, it's... please, please. And, you know, then the other guy shows up. I'm like, no, God, she's like 12, dude. Mm-hmm. 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 No, let's, let's definitely talk about this. Because um, I remember watching this for the first time and going, I'm vaguely uncomfortable, but the tone of the scene is so light and upbeat and cheerful. Clearly, the intent is to be goofy. The the, the intent is, you know, she's a cute little girl, and, you know, we're we're, we're enjoying that. But it does not play well (laughs) these days. For a split second. When he opens that door, and he's, and I'm like, oh, creeper. Oh, I'm getting a creeper feeling here. Like, this, like is no, this going to be? And no. I thought about it. I'm like, yeah. is he working for Mosca? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, he's going to come in, and he's going to be like, hi, you're really sweet. And then he's going to, like, throw her off the, mm-hmm. the blimp or whatever the hell's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, nope. You know, they obviously went with a very light, like you said, you know, mm-hmm. nice, nice direction with it. But it's mm-hmm. like. There was a second. Yeah. Like, Good call. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah. By the way, dimensionally, this thing is like the TARDIS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ornithopters, you have a kitchen. You've got like the bird end of this is like a two person cabin, and yet you've got like the whole crew in there when they're trying to steer the thing around. The like, Japanese are very good at condensing things into tight spaces. It's like a capsule hotel. I Yes. Clearly. Um, And I'm sure it was all mapped out. Like I'm sure they were designed. But you're absolutely right that you're getting. You're like that's a lot of visual space for what we see from the outside. That's interesting. Yeah, the galley has room for a dude to be peeling potatoes and like four other people to come in and help, Mm -hmm. and there'd be like a ton of things going on. Like yeah, the galley's like fifty percent of the entire (laughs) ship. Yeah. (laughs) Food's important, but you know, really exactly. Um, I also do love this shot of Mama and Papa uh, playing chess together. Um, yeah. Partly for the fact of getting across that they, you know, they clearly have a relationship. Um, you know, they're still together for a reason. But I also love the two rings in front um, that are separate. You know, hinting that like they are definitely still together, but it, you know, they're not like lovey dovey. Right. Right. They they have a, a Good working relationship, but it's evolved as time has, has gone on. Um, <laughs> and do you interpret the jade bracelet as prosperity, or what would you interpret oh, the jade and the, the sort of colors of the cinnabar box? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, red for know. fortune. I yeah, think. Okay. Yeah. So, or at least for Chinese, red yeah. for fortune. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I would think that jade, I, I don't know what the gemology yeah. of jade uh, is for meaning. Do not know. Do not know. Um, um, but yeah, I think definitely prosperity in general. Yeah. yeah that they're, they've done pretty well from themselves, which of course you can see from the plush surroundings. Yeah. Um, that uh, clearly kind of that out. And I just noticed all the alcohol bottles in the back. Um, <laughs> so that also is a good sign. Well, they are pirates. Are pirates, exactly. <laughs> Yo-ho, yo-ho. It's mostly rum. Right. And a few cordials. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> Anyone for a nice aperitif? Yes, let me yeah. finish this bottle of rum. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah, and so up they go. Pazu has his shift um, on lookout. Shida comes up to be with him. Very sweet scene between the two of them, just kind of reminiscing and, and getting to know each other better. Um, um, and I do just love this scene in general of hearing them talk, watching um, uh, Dola you know, listen to them. Yeah. And back and forth of all that, um, and seeing the other pirates listen to them, and just the the very sort of comfortable familial feel of the scene, I think. Yeah, um, which is very sweet. Um, well, also, also when she does climbing up there, we see another good example that she's not really sturdy on blimps. No, because <laughs> you know, falls out of one, she almost flies off of the top of the next one. Like she needs to stay away from rigid air machines. Exactly. This is yes. just not a, not a place for her. <laughs> I love you harder that. Well, that was exciting. Wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Um, 
Were yeah. parachute pants a thing at this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, apparently this is like an MC Hammer moment. There we go. Um, and this is one of the things that I, I think some folks um, diss the movie for um, uh, that I didn't have a problem with is that one of the things about Pazzo and Cheetah is they very much act like children. Um, you know, they do dangerous, stupid things, but, you know, kids hit each other with sticks all the time, right? Like, there's a very childlike sense of some of their, their behavior that I think is very appropriate to their age. Um, well, it's that, it's sort of that tweening moment, because Pazu yeah. lives by himself. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, Shida had lived at the yeah. farm mm-hmm. by herself, mm-hmm. so they're in that sort of transitional moment where they yes. still do childish things because they don't have a worldly understanding mm-hmm. of what's going on. Yep. You know, uh, she talks about, she learns, she learns things. She learns what spells are, what's mm-hmm. what good and bad spells mm-hmm. are. But it's like, you can kind of tell that she doesn't, she knows there's, there's consequence. She knows there's gravity to it, mm-hmm. but she's never had to use it. Yeah. Exactly. So she doesn't really know what it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, so you've got this kind of maturing aspect of, like, they're as they're doing this thing, they're leaving childhood a little further behind, but they're not mm-hmm. quite to the point of being adults. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah especially with Pazu's learning the negative reinforcements, like, <laughs> just simply stepping off ledges. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and as you can point out, you know, in a society like this, you know, you know, 11, 12 years old, you're starting your trade. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're starting to, 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 yeah. to move into the adult world by this point. You start um, to put away childish things. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, and then, you know, we have Then our, you discover anime and you start really going backwards. But that's not a point here. Um, <laughs> and then we have a scene you again, where the, uh, the, 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 the Goliath shows up out of the clouds. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that whole thing. It's like, oh, okay. Go back to that well. Um... um uh, but uh, and I, I I do love that very whale like image of it going back under yeah. the clouds and the the menace of it, um, very cool. Um, but yeah, then they, they get in the glider, um, uh, and we see the hurricane. We know what the hurricane is. Um, again, I, I think these are all very effective, but very kind of linking scenes of okay, we need to get to the next spot. People are realizing things and moving forward. Nothing. Yeah, let's have it on deep. Um, and so in they go into the eye of the hurricane. Um, uh, uh, Papa, can I make it go any faster? Um, and uh, in they go. Um, with again another, see if we can get it here. Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole scene is that the hurricane is straight out of uh, Arcadia of My Youth, like it's it's blatant <laughs> at this point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Now we've seen that. Like, oh, okay, gotcha, you, cool. Um, um, and you're absolutely right, Josh. You know, they do very much uh, evolve as characters as the movie goes on. Uh, the two kids, um, yeah, and then then, uh, then they land, um, and we get this again. It's a very iconic sequence of just all of these clouds, um, and there's these little glimpses of imagery of land, of uh, broken pillars, um, and that gorgeous Hisaishi music just swelling up under all of it. Um, to finally reveal uh, that we're finally at Laputa. Um, and again, you know, good on them for holding off until now. Yeah. Um, we do get a big reveal. Um, yeah, and then uh, they, they, you know, um, untie ourselves. And then the, speaking of, let's talk about the, again, sort of the iconic moment of, of spinning Sheeta off the edge of the cliff. Yeah. Uh, Can we just heave you back on so we don't die? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> children are children. Um, um, uh, yeah, and then Robot shows up, and um, and here's where we get a little less visual storytelling, a little more just storytelling, storytelling, where we discover that it's, it, it's here just to move the, uh, the aircraft because it landed on a bird's nest. Um, surprisingly sweet thing for it to do, um, as opposed to kill everything in sight. Yes. Um, Save the birds, kill all humans. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think I do explore the for a little bit. Um, now, one thing that... Um, and then we get Pokemon after a while. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, the little, the little 
I um, wanted so much more exploration. All the yeah. time it took us to get here, I wanted to see right. a lot more of, of this, yeah. you know, mythical, magical floating world. I agree. Um, now, one thing... Again, that, I, again, I didn't write the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that I think isn't made explicit and clear in the movie um, is that Laputa is actually two pieces. Um, there is the Laputa core, and then there is that extra ring, and what we see later is the, you know, devastation device um, right. uh, 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 right down to the bottom. So what we're seeing here is really kind of a transition as they're going from kind of the one part into kind of the core of Laputa with all of these, uh, uh, with more of the nature. Um, yeah. um, and all the, you know, the, the, the gorgeous columns and so forth. But I, I, I completely agree that when they got to Laputa, I was like, oh, good, we're going to spend you know, half an hour here. It's like, technically, yeah, but we don't really see much more of it than this. Yeah. That's funny. Well, like when they're looking down on the mm. beavers... Yeah, like, things, the hell yeah. those things are jumping um, and they look down through the pool Yeah, it's like we, we get a, a sense of decay but is right. what was this that this, this is a pool now that you can see there's more city down there Yeah, was it right. always city down there mm -hmm. or has something happened over the years where it, like it was like some kind of you know gallery kind of thing opened to the sky and it just filled with rainwater mm -hmm. and it's like there's so much more that could have been yeah. like expressed about you know what happened what happened on this this floating island? Yes. It's like, oh, yeah. I know that's not the whole story, but you know, it, really, it's, it's a very, very mysterious thing, almost like an angel's egg, one, one might say. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, yeah. well, Castle in the Sky too, when it comes out yeah, in twenty more yeah. years, yeah. Um, well, we'll get an well, actually, so Uncle Palm, Uncle Palm will come out with a scuba gear and just be like, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> oh this drain down here is plugged. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Oh. Is it like every if you every twenty minutes? Oh, Uncle Palm! You know? yeah. Oh, Uncle Palm! You know, he just rocked out. It took us forever to get up here. How the hell did you get up here? <laughs> uh, rocks with the when you hit them in the light. I don't know. And, what is it doing here? Just kind of go. It's like Catherine. There's just one of him everywhere. You know, he's, he's all yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. What does this say? Uncle Palm shows up. You want to knock? Oh, thank you, plot device. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, and so um, we get in, and again, this is one of those things where I think it doesn't really come across too clearly, but what's what's happened in Laputa is that there's there are these two kind of competing forces. You have the this secondary thing that was built um, uh, on top of it, and then this, this tree from... Um, um, from original Laputa has now overgrown its original scale and intent to kind of counterbalance that and try to fix it. Um, and so, which is why you see kind of this, like the wire mesh of the dome is being kind of pushed back yeah. by the branches and so forth, by how big it is. It's clearly, you know, not quite still in, in perfect balance with Laputa the way you'd expect it to be. It's a uh, tree power from Tenchi Muyo. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Very much so. Um, what is the, what's the myth? You guys roll or whatever? The world tree? Uh, Igrasil. Yeah. Igrasil. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, my pronunciation of like too many consonants <laughs> in one spot. Never any, never any good. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, and so obviously we, we get um, more about, um, uh, you know, Laputa. Um, it should also be pointed out, um, one thing that's kind of a little unclear. Um, this is not a monument. This is a grave. That the kids are in front of, yeah. Um, you know, they they obviously interpret it as a monument because they don't know what this grave looks like. But this is very clearly a grave um, of perhaps the founders of Laputa or whatever. But if we can we can assume that everyone left, um, you know, this is kind of them leaving behind and saying here, you know, here we are marking our, our dead um, uh, for the future. Um, uh, yeah, and then. It would have been great to have known, you know what I mean? Like to have yeah. somebody read, because uh, Moscow has a <laughs> book that he right. goes exactly. through and reads it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. mom shows up and like, what it says. Um, but Moscow has a book yeah. that he can like interpret the panel that he's working yeah. on. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. Oh, couldn't you just You're have given us to... like two minutes where he was like, oh, these are the founders of Blood. It says here, you know, like, oh, please, but no, well, just kind of present it and walk away. Well, like, you see, if you see there, there's a panel in the back of a shot which shows an image of a, of a curve, and that curve is an ancient Mesopotamian well, image. Well, yeah, okay, I see. Now. It's all become clear. See, this is all Kinyi form. If we knew, 
Exactly. For him, for, from, okay. the, from, yeah. from the city of Ur, yeah. then we would have known exactly what that was said. It's our own fault for that. Not that. Completely yeah. our own fault. Hallmark. Hallmark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but we do also get to get it. This is where I wish I could have been in the audience when the fox squirrels show up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's such a wonderful moment. Um, and it's, I mean, it, it's, it's just straight fox squirrels from Nausicaa. Um, I also have to wonder, um, and I don't know, um, there is a moment in the Nausicaa manga where something happens to Teto. There, there is a, a dramatic shift with, with Teto's involvement in the storyline. And it may have been around this time, timeline-wise. And so I wonder if that also didn't kind of tie in a little bit, where it's like, you just read this in the manga, now we're going to you know, put this in the movie. Again, I don't know, but it, it is something possible. Was interesting. Um, uh, yeah, everything's great. Everything's wonderful, and then it's not because the the evil <laughs> military shows up. Um, yeah, paradise is wrecked again. Exactly. Um, were there a bunch of choices to, to, uh, for sale? Yes, uh, there were. I owned one. Um, there are definitely fox squirrel plushies out there. Um, yeah, and so the military shows up, and we enter the. Okay, we have half an hour to go. <laughs> we have to get into the death star, do just, the thing. And get yeah. Out. Yeah. Ah! Uh, um, um, and so, yeah, and so you know, Muska goes off on his own, and you're like, oh, okay, here's, you know, we, we, we suspected that Muska had his own agenda, now it's going to confirm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Poor Two Stooges. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, His okay. loyal henchmen mm-hmm. pay for their loyalty. Very much so. Um, you will be rewarded handsomely with <laughs> death. Um, with a quick and painful death. I mean, oh, did I say painful? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, and the soldiers loot Laputa um, in a yeah. um, uh, somewhat over the top, but very, very obvious way. A very, very clear the message here, I think. Um, yeah, and not a very culturally friendly and no. aware of significant value of you know, these <laughs> things. Yeah, Just ripping them off, throwing them in a pile. Um, so yeah, so we have yeah, the, like when the guys, soldiers are stripping the gold, yeah, uh, the gold guys. paneling yeah. off yeah. of like a column, and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. wow. <laughs> no, don't bother studying that. Don't bother finding the technology behind. Yeah. Just tear the whole thing down. Exactly. Um. But, uh, yeah. On the other side of that wall are floating blocks of death. Yeah, think, you pretty know. much. Um, and so, yeah. And I love, I, yeah, again, speaking to the, the earlier thing, is that, uh, um, yeah, Muska comes over. Okay, how's it going to get in? What's it going to look like? It, there's a, a hole appears. Okay. <laughs> just, just, yeah. you know, and he walks. Like, I guess that's how that works. All right, we'll, we'll <laughs> move forward. Um, it's magic. magic. And it just magic. happens to be... Meanwhile, and meanwhile, Pazu is driving right. like, you know, <laughs> five-ton blocks out of the sky into an unknown area. There's probably somebody mm. farming down there like when the robot fell. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh, what the hell was that? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, and so uh, she gets, gets, um, gets kidnapped by him. Pazu obviously can't rescue her. He gets the, the graze on his cheek. Um, literally shedding blood for her. Um, and his first real injury in the whole film. Yeah. Like right at the tail end. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he can take a, he can take a hit. Um, so yeah, so he offers to can survive a grenade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he, he gets this up from, uh, 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 from the pirates, frees them. Um, so we're kind of moving forward on that. Um, Interesting statement that she makes mm. after she shakes out the the gun and the mm-hmm. little grenades. Yeah, she goes, "He has become a man." Oh it's yeah, like, uh, like, uh, yeah. You're good at your bit. bloomers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah no, I and that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that grenade scene where she's just like, "It wasn't me." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, Sorry, it's the little things that make it. Yeah, no, totally, totally. Uh, I'm actually now seeing a mural on the on the back, and I'm actually trying to interpret the mural and figure out what's going on in the mural and all that stuff there. But uh, whatever. 
Um, I'm sure we could dissect all of these things. It's probably ancient Sumerian. It probably is. <laughs> Again. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Gozer. Yeah. Marduk. Um, Marduk. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so we, we, we move forward into the central part of Lapida. Um, designed by Qbert. Designed by, yeah. <laughs> um, and in they go, and, uh, and again, here's where we, we, we see that the tree is trying to push out or protect or otherwise um, change what's going on in this chamber, uh, which is why it's o so overgrown. Um, and, uh, and he has a, Muska has a really bad reaction to all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's, it's kind offended. of over the top. Like, what's that? He's offended. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's, it's, it's a surprise. The entire place is overgrown and falling apart and in shambles. So yeah. it's not really a super surprise. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's compromised the operation of any of the central core. Right. right. But you still yeah. see the blocks in the room where he leaves his henchmen mm -hmm. to die. Yeah. Um, those are still moving around. Mm -hmm. And then in here, it's like, oh, you got a field of wheat and trees. Mm -hmm. It hasn't really hurt anything. Yeah. Um, so personally, I think that, that is, this is Miyazaki doing his, you know, people who like technology are bad. Uh, thing, um, where I, th I think Muska has, has very much a technology is a technology focus, put it that way. Right. Um, yeah. You know, nature bad, technology good. And so, what's his nature doing here? Um, <laughs> Damn you, nature! Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So he uh, he finally reveals the eight-sided dice of doom <laughs> um, uh, at the center. And starts decoding all the little bits and all the little control things, um, and we start accelerating into the end. Um, uh, well, yeah, he starts uh, uh, converting and, and uh, uh, actually using the weapon power of of, uh, of that. I do love this shot when he has all the little, you know, all the little points come out in there, and we cut back to the general who's just standing there sweating at the opening at the entrance. Uh, and Muska goes, just come in, it'll be fine. And you can see the general. Yeah, famous. Yeah. yeah. Anytime the villain says, it'll be fine. No. No. And, it'll be fine for the villain most of the time. And given how cartoonish the general has been up to this point, I, I, I really appreciate that they show that he knows he's walking into a death trap. Like, he, he clearly is like, mm. Mm, I know what's going to happen here, but I have no choice. I have to go in. So it's the self-awareness there is, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so they come, um, and to your point, um, bad things happen. <laughs> um, as, as they use the, uh, the giant laser of doom to destroy things. Um, and... Uh, and a lovely, impressive explosion. Yes, exactly. But it's on the yes. water, so no one gets hurt. Yes. It's all good. Um, and then, uh, what is the point at which he... Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then he opens the uh, uh, the floor, and down they go. And, and again, at this point, it's, it's really interesting how um, no one ever gets shot. You know, no one ever gets knifed. Um, yeah. If anyone dies, they just fall. It's very easy. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the mm. death off screen. Death off yeah. screen. Very GI Joe. Well, maybe see, we're not going to contemplate crystals. on the fact that that. <laughs> right. It, it, we're not, and we're not going to contemplate the fact that none of them have crystals and that they're falling at probably about, what, two or three miles? So they have time to think on their way down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going, oh, well. It's water. You, yeah. know, you can land in water. That's oh, solid. yeah, it's water. They'll, they'll right. splash down. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be um, fine. It'll well, be and your toes. <laughs> And again, if you put Conan, Conan can survive that just fine. So it's like, maybe they can do it, you know? Ponzi could fall through bricks. What's, what's hitting with some water? <laughs> maybe the Goliath would, you know, swoop down. Just there we go. parts of it could swoop down mm -hmm. and uh, pick them up. Oh, yeah. Should be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. They'll survive the fall only to have the, you know, the sharks come up. Yeah. See them roll their dead, dead eyes, eyes as they chomp. <laughs> All sides. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then the robots come out, and as we were saying before, you know, 
Well, if one was bad, 300 <laughs> is not great yeah. <laughs> in full working order. Um, and, and yeah, I think this is, this is really effective kind of storytelling of going, oh, you're doomed. Like, the, the, the military, like, they're, they're, they're done. Like, we know what's going to happen there. We've, we, we can write them off and move on conceptually um, as an audience. Um, uh, yeah, and so uh, Pazu somehow manages to survive all this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of, kind of absurd. I'll just grab onto the thinnest vein yeah. possible. And granted, again, you know, look at uh, Cagliostro and you know, Lupin leaping across the, the roofs, you know, and barely yeah. hanging yeah. on to things. It's, it's very much that. Um, um, well, I think it's all, it's also somewhat of a testament in Mosca that he yeah. rejects nature and he's all about the technology. Oh, good call. And here yep. we have Pazu who's like, his life is hanging literally mm-hmm. by a branch, yep. by a vine. Mm-hmm. So it's nature that he's clinging to to keep yeah. falling to his death. Yeah. And what does he do to, to you know, as he climbs up into the mm-hmm. monster or the uh, robot chute? Yeah. He takes his shoes off. Yeah. Know? Because now he's all like hands and feet back to nature, baby. He's climbing yep. that up, beating technology one footstep at a time. Yep, exactly. That's a great call. Um, nature saves his life. Yep. Um, yeah, because you can't cling to the Death Star unless you've got, or the right. Cloud City unless you've got like an antenna. Exactly. And there was yeah. no antenna. Right. There. Yeah, that's a, that is a, that is a design flaw. Yep, exactly. Um, <laughs> Along with that three meter wide exhaust port. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big design flaw. Bullseye wall press at t16.com. Yeah, that's bigger than two meters. Yeah. Um, all he wanted was power converters. That's yeah, exactly. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so Shita uh, runs off. And I found it interesting when she when she runs off into this area with kind of the, the, the storage of the other robots that are not the same design. Like they have yeah. right. breasts, kind of. Yeah. It's really interesting because um, I'm I just I don't know what they're getting across here other than there being you know other robots with other designs and other kind of intents in them and other other roles perhaps. Um, but it is a, you know, a neat little bit of world building of oh there are other kinds of robots uh, uh, possibility of an old nursery ah uh, possible yep mm-hmm. you, you know a little creepy <laughs> giant <laughs> feminoid yeah. robots yeah. raising your children but. And who knows the who culture knows. That, that was in Laputa? So, mm-hmm. well. um, um, yeah, and so and then um, uh, she did Pazu reunite, and she did does the smart thing, passes the stone to Pazu. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. I thought he Shida. swallowed. Yeah, he just put it in his mouth. Yeah. I was um, like, wow, okay, that's kind of a way to like defeat the bad guy mm-hmm. to be like, haha, I swallowed it. And then the bad guy produces a knife. It's like, right, like yeah, that's, that's the other problem. Like, yeah, 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 badly, yeah. badly from here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not good. Um, uh, but yeah, but uh, uh, Pazu continues on. Um, um, and we have the standoff um, where she <laughs> kind of just stands there and monologues for a little bit about. Yep. Don't you understand what you should do and you should do the thing because I'm the heroine and it just one of those things where again for an eighties movie it's fine, but it kind of feels a little flat these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, well it also obvious. feels a little weird when you have a kid with a grenade launcher who's sitting two feet away from the thing that explodes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the eighties. <laughs> Stuff yeah. like that happened. Definitely. Yeah. Um But uh, Pazu shows up um and offers a deal and if this isn't Castle of Cagliostro, the, wa- the clock tower, right. you know, here's uh, the ring, I'm going to walk, we even have like him walking across to her, you know, the whole time, it is very yeah. much just that scene right there. Um, uh, uh, and then, um, and yeah, this is, a, this is a really dark moment for, for this movie. Um, you know, Pazu and Cheetah say, Oh, and it's Pazu who comes with the idea of we need to do this spell of destruction and bring down Lapida and us with it. Like, we're all going to die here. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty dark moment. Um, and this is also the moment that broke Twitter. Really? Um, so, when, so Castle in the Sky re-aired on Japanese television in 
oh, I'm forgetting when, but it was like a couple of years after Twitter first launched, and Twitter had gotten fairly big, and so there was a big thing amongst all the otaku to um, to say when this airs and when they say the spell, we should all tweet it at the same time. <laughs> And we'll kind of, you know, fill you Twitter. Twitter. Well, no, it was at the end. We'll, we'll, it'll be funny. You know, we'll, we'll, Twitter will be it'll full. Be you know, yeah. And this was back when we go to Twitter.com. It would show you all the most recent tweets. Like, that's, that's right. the, yeah, those are the days. <laughs> okay. Um, and so they did that, and Twitter went down for, like, two hours. Because <laughs> uh, it was just all of the, these tweets. And what's hilarious is what was then reading all of the articles, like, the day after from all of the, like, Western, you know, technophiles who are trying to explain that anime geeks in Japan broke Twitter because of this <laughs> message in this movie, and we don't know what the heck we're talking about. Why did this happen? Like, it's just, there, there are many layers to this that we cannot explain. Um, Never underestimate the power of the otaku. Exactly. Um, and so they. Um, they do the thing. After it starts falling apart, uh, Musuka goes and again. Musuka doesn't you know, doesn't die on screen. Um, no. He, he goes, just says something, goes off screen, and then you see a lot of yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean he gets blinded at the end. Yeah, um, I do think that's kind of symbolic that he is, you know, blind as a person, um, and so he's kind of blinded at the end. But it's interesting to have that kind of. That, that literal extra little bit added on to it. Yeah. Um, and then everything falls apart. Well, I yeah, I don't know to the degree that it, mm. the connectivity, but think of Saul. True. Uh, and Saul gets blinded. Right. Mm -hmm. And that then he becomes Paul. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like this guy is Paul. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I that that occurred to me kind of in that mm -hmm. way, but it's like. Mm -hmm. There was no redemption. For yeah, him. yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, no. I get the blinding part, but yeah. it's like, ah, uh, there wasn't any redemption. Yeah, <laughs> like, not oh, exactly. that's not good. Um, and then to that early point, then it's kind of all of the 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 second the outer layer kind of breaks away. Yeah. Um, that 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 extra uh, bit, and Lapita then flies up, and the the implication here is that um, the, this kind of the lodestone thing um, was being kind of weighed down. By all of that stuff, uh, so it was kind of meant to fly in space, I suppose, um, or there was some other technology going on to keep it on Earth. Um, and it now well, that was ballast. The, the right. entire weapon system was That's ballast to keep the thing kind of like neutrally buoyant. And now that you've removed all the weaponage, it's no longer neutral. It's positively buoyant. It's off to space. Right, and, it, and it's kind of weird because like, it's like so how was it supposed to work before all that? I don't, yeah. I don't even get all that. But again. There's a there's a thing in the back background of a of a shot that'll explain all yeah. that. Yeah, explain everything. Um, and so off it goes, but of course, Pazu and Shido are fine because it's a Ghibli film. Right. The roots saved them, the just like they saved Pazu. Totally. Um, exactly. Yes, nature saves them. Um, and off they fly. We get that wonderful last shot of the uh, the the robot um, walking off doing its thing. Um, and then back they come. Uh, she has had her hair shorn, which is obviously symbolic as well of the like, transition. Yep. Um, and then they come, and uh, uh, we find that the the pirates have they've gotten they've they've got a little something. something. They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't know quite if they had time to do that, but I don't know. Um, I guess no, that, that that does make sense because they were they were. They were flying in along with the Goliath, so they could have gotten there first, grabbed some stuff, and then gotten attacked by the crew. So that, that, that makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah, you have this surprisingly happy ending of the pirates flying off um, while Pazzo and Cheetah fly off on their own, which is also kind of, a, kind of weird. It's like, wouldn't you want to stay with them? Are you like, okay, on your own? Okay, I guess. Um, right, yeah, I thought they were going to stay together. Yeah, and, yeah, I did. Yeah, too. happy pirate family. Yeah, happy pirate family. Yeah, um, especially with Dola, like gives you know, Cheetah a big hug, and it's mm -hmm. like obviously you know, there's right, caring, yeah. loving experience there. Mm -hmm. You had Pazu getting along so well, fixing the engine. Like, yeah, that's kind of where you guys like felt like you guys should have been. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know. Um, yeah, off we fly, and then we get to see uh, the castle in the sky floating in space above the earth on uh, all those lovely images of the. Uh, and centuries later, as astronomers go, we just don't know. Tree <laughs> <laughs> up there, we just don't. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. We, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, it, it'll, it'll, how does the tree survive in space, by the way? Gerard technology. <laughs> Okay, I take that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. The light wing. Yeah, right. Okay. Light wings. I was going to say, because that roof system up there could uh, theoretically glean enough moisture out of the high atmosphere, but not pretty likely. So, Magic. Yeah, just <laughs> shut up and believe. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, at least you get a vacant one shot, which is kind of odd. Um, and back to your but initial mm. point, Brent, when you look down on this like landscape, yeah. you don't see a destroyed world down there. No, it doesn't seem to be like no, it, it, you, know, you start to see, you know, the, the circular like lakes or things like that. And there's that one circular yeah. lake in the shot, so maybe. Um, but yeah, otherwise it just looks like, you know, Ireland or something. Yeah, it's like <clears> so where what happened when we saw the shot? Where there were all these floating islands. Yeah. We hear from Mosca, it's like, oh, you know, they were an empire. They ruled the planet. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, was that? I mean, it seems to me it's like 700 years ago. If there was like yeah. battle damage and scarred landscape, 700 mm -hmm. years is not enough time to like wither away giant, you know, craters mm -hmm. and wreckage. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so what are we looking at here? Where'd yeah. all the other floating islands go? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, actually, Josh, um, let me see here. Um, John, you have a really good point. Um, I just noticed this. The tree glows. The tree is literally glowing in these shots. You're, you're actually, I think you're, I think it has its own environment. I think we are, we are literally getting the implication that it has a self-contained atmosphere. Damn. Um, which would explain why it's glowing. Huh. Possible. Um, and a very John, question, John. How many robots survived the fall and are now wandering around? Yeah. <laughs> They're all um, in the ocean. They're fine. Uh, absolutely. Um, they just go ruin guard, guardians, and they're just kind of sitting there, you know, and they walk wander around. Or um, maybe for the Castle in the Sky 2, they're reconstructing uh, the Death Star base, yeah, there we go. and it will rise again from the water. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Um, nice. Lockheed 2, Lulu's. Uh, and that's Castle in the Sky. Yeah, and <laughs> I rag on this movie for its first length. Um, my issue with it is is more the fact that there there's a lot of connective tissue in the movie that doesn't seem very particularly I'm going to say useful. Like it's fun, it's not, it's good to see, like I enjoy it. Right. But it feels like the movie could have been half an hour shorter and just kind of Moved from piece to piece I, to piece, and just kind of really, really had a drive that, that, that this movie doesn't have. After I read the synopsis, I, honest to God, thought it was going to be like ninety minutes, ninety, yeah. two, you know, mm -hmm. something, something like that, hour and a half. Yeah. And then when I saw the thing, it was two hours. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I think uh, more day. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's just over two hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and it's funny because again, I, I, there, there's nothing in there which I, th I think was done badly. Um, and normally I'd just be like, well, more of anime, great, you know, I can't complain. But I, I think the more I watch it, the more I just notice those elements of it, I notice those right. those pieces where I'm like, ah, this is weird. I I got I was left at the end of it wanting a lot more explanation of things. Mm -hmm. Again, beyond doing my own homework. <laughs> yeah, I just I, it just seems like so many. So many times yeah. there was like some there were lost opportunities to like just throw a little bit more information, mm -hmm. work with some of the things that they dropped in there that could have plussed the story better, and you mm -hmm. could cut out some of the treacle. You know, yeah. so I I, right. I I wouldn't imagine that you would have gotten it significantly <clears throat> shorter, but you you probably could have saved at least twenty minutes a half an hour if you would drop mm -hmm. some of the superfluous crap and then just go on with something that was a little more a little more core to the story and gave you a little more background so that you felt a little mm -hmm. more invested in it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, you know, when I watched this, I enjoyed it, but I, at the end of it, I was just like, you know, if I was. 11, 12 years old, I would probably would have loved this movie, but mm -hmm. you know, that's the audience for this movie. So I don't yeah. think, you know, I don't think it was important. 
uh, to good explain good point. That. Good point. Yep. Yeah. yeah. To to explain to the kids as opposed to showing a twenty minute um car chasing a train on, on <laughs> yeah. a huge ass trestle. Yeah. You know, that, that that is far more entertaining than going, Okay, let's take a look at this kidney form and right. you know, yeah. da, 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 and good point. And look at yeah. it. Yeah. But but I did enjoy the movie. I mean it was it yeah. was very action, yeah. um, except for you know, Uncle Palm where I fell asleep, but beyond <laughs> that I was <laughs> But you enjoyed, enjoyed your nap, didn't you? See? Hey. See, see yeah, 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 there we go, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Solid sleep. Solid sleep, cool. Um <laughs> Yeah, any final thoughts on Castle in the Sky? Beyond that. I'm glad I got to definitely, see it finally. Yeah, definitely a G kids then. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it is a um, definitely a classic, classic Ghibli film. Uh, definitely in the, in the canon. And it was so much nicer than having to watch 20 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Beating the head with a two by four and watching people turn into tang and there are definitely you know, whatever more intense ways to spend your time than yeah. yes. <laughs> All right, that will do it. We'll take a quick break, just a few minutes, and then we'll be back to talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. See you in a bit.